Hello folks, I'm Ken Harris and uh, I'm going to show you a, a little somewhat Asian type scene today. Uh, the tools I'm using, uh, a, a small knife, a detail brush, a fan brush and the brush for general painting about one and a half centimetres wide. Uh, the colours I have are, are, pr are pretty standard. Uh, I have olive green here which actually is not, I don't use it on a, on a really regular basis but Prussian blue, uh, spectrum red, uh, burnt sienna, yellow green, Australian red gold, yellow ochre, burnt amber, uh, chrome orange and Payne's grey. Um, the, the mixture in this bottle here is just it's really just turpentine. I've, mis I've washed a brush in it, uh, and I have a tiny bit of medium here in the in the lid of the the jar, and the board itself has been covered with a uh, a, a little bit of medium. Now I'm going to take I'm going to take um, a bit of blue, and um, in this case it'll be Prussian blue and white. And I'm going to run that sky in, but there's not really going to be a lot of this Prussian blue and white mixture because I want to run in quite a lot of uh, pink in the sky. So it's going to be just very spasmodic across the, the board. And I'm putting it on rather thin important to do that I'm putting it on with somewhat of a crisscross stroke however we don't want a basket weave pattern on the board um, but it is roughly a crisscross stroke in large areas where you're going to be able to see the brush strokes then uh, this criss crisscross stroke is uh, very desirable now I'm going to also run that bit of pink in while that blue is wet and uh, I'm going to use a little of this spectrum red, lovely colour this spectrum red and just a tiny bit stronger. And I'm going to also add a tiny bit of chrome orange. Now when you add the chrome orange, it gives it a, a little bit of a apricot sort of effect. And when you're changing from one primary to another, the blue to the, the, the pink with a base of red, of course, uh, you need to wash the brush and squeeze all the turps right out of it. I'm going to come back into this sky here now and fill in these little bits that have been deliberately left open here. And just pick up the edge of that blue. Run that in like so. And a little bit down here. And then I'm coming back to shape some clouds with it, like so. Now, just take into consideration if you're going to have trees in the painting, and I am going to have some rather large trees, we don't want too much interference from this background paint. Uh, we don't want too much contamination from it. So put it on thin, keep it thin. I'm going to run that in like so. And I'm going to also run in this mountain with a little bit of this pink paint. Now that's something that I don't recall ever having done before but I'm going to just underpaint that pink un underpaint the board with that pink and uh, then I'm going to come back and use 
a little bit of purple over that. So I'm going to take a little bit of that Prussian blue and white. And we have a little bit left over from something up there. And I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. Just a tiny bit more red. And we'll see how, might be just a whisker more, that's about it. It's very hard to tell until you get it on the board. I'm not going to wash the brush in this particular instance. That's not bad. We'll brush that away there. And we have another hill in here. We'll just run that guy in there, brush him away here. You notice that I'm not taking this right to the bottom because I want to run some bushes along here. There's not much point in getting too much contamination. If you do run it down behind the, the bushes, then run it down thin. Let's fuse that away here. We'll just put a little more pink into this guy here. And, and we could highlight the side of this bloke to some degree. That's about what we want. That's, that's going to come up like a million dollars when it's finished. Now, the ground itself, I'm going to use, incidentally, we could creep a little bit of water in here on the left hand side. Um, although we've got the trees over here, we could creep a little water in here and run it back out of the painting like so. So we'll just um, mix up a tiny bit more blue and white. and run that little bit of water in there. A little bit of blue and white, and we'll run that water, very similar to the sky. Purely coincidental. We could have it just a fraction darker. Get that in there like so. And then we'll come back to a little bit of yellow ochre and white or a little burnt sienna in places. And we'll fill in, uh, fill in a little bit of this ground here. Now I'm going to make the ground quite rough in this foreground, eventually with a knife as we get towards the end of the painting. But for the time being, we'll just run that little bit of burnt sienna, or you could use Australian red gold. This is Australian red gold. It's got more of a yellowy look about it. And rightly so, because it has a lot of yellow in it. It's, uh, it's actually Cadillac D, burnt sienna, and a speck of red to, to make it. So we could use a little more in here. And how easy that is, is it not? There's the whole board covered, the painting half done almost, and uh, how effortless that is. Now, I'm going to wash the brush because we have some uh, trees in the, in, the, in the background there. And I want to get just a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of viridian green. I have a little viridian green here. This is not a colour that I use on a, on a really consistent basis, uh, but it is a wonderful colour. Uh, it's a colour that goes back many, many years with a lot of artists. And um, 
it is to some degree considered a, a real base colour in a lot of artists palettes um, I don't know that I would go along with that uh, thought but nevertheless uh, I will say this it, it's a colour that is extremely handy and I would encourage everyone to have a tube of this in their in their uh, repertoire of paint um, it is incidentally a mistake to have too many tubes of paint um, I have about eight or ten or something um, but uh, you certainly don't need much more than that I have seen people with 50 and 60 tubes of paint but in many cases they're often very closely related um, they're just they're just doubling up on a lot of the colors I've washed the brush again and uh, I'm going to run these bushes in along here in the distance we could darken these bushes if you look at any bushes um, and you squint your eyes to some degree so that you're so that you're just looking through squint your eyes so that you're just looking through your eyelashes at at bushes and 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 heavy foliage on trees you'll notice that the foliage looks quite black particularly towards the bottom so uh, when when you run bushes in like this of the one tonal value from top to bottom um, it can be greatly improved by simply darkening the bottom area of those bushes you'll find that in reality they will look you go outside and look at the trees and bushes and you'll be astonished at how dark they look towards the bottom of the bushes now I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, a bluish tonal value there and darken them straight away as soon as you darken them at the bottom they look better do they not of course they do now we're going to go to a break for a few minutes uh, that will allow you to catch up and adjust your recording equipment <laughs> and I believe a lot of people do record it um, and uh, then after the break we'll come back and and finish the painting all right so I'll see you I'll see you after the break and uh, we'll we'll complete the painting thank you <laughs> 